Hey there everyone, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. Today we are on site in a local small business and sadly this small business has suffered the worst thing a small business today can suffer and that is to lose all their data. They've placed all their eggs in one basket and now the basket has exploded, took everything with it. Financial data, customer data, SQL database, everything. Luckily for them, Synology has agreed to provide a DS923+, Plus, along with four 4 terabyte drives. By the way, they are not sponsoring this video or editing this video, just full disclosure. So, let's see exactly what went wrong here and how a Synology NES would have probably helped to avoid this disaster and will probably guarantee this will never happen again. Let's go! Alright guys, so when I said all their eggs were in one, ba one basket, this is what I meant. This was the basket. This is an old Dell server that has served them well for a lot of years. It was a great server at the time, but it held everything this business relied on. Data. Even their uh, Active Directory was in this server. They didn't have a second domain controller. Everything included, including some even family photos that the owner had. He placed them on a network drive that was mapped here and now everything is gone. So this server is probably going to go to the trash and let's see what we're going to do here. All right, so I'm walking over to where the network rack is because that's where we're going to place the Synology NAS. Now remember, this is a small business with a small budget, with a low IT knowledge, and they're not doing anything thousands of other small businesses are doing right now. Problem is they're doing it long enough to outlive their Dell server, but other businesses are doing the exact same thing. Luckily for them, one of their employees has contacted me, I contacted Synology, and we sort of took it from there, but we are not going to do anything that resembles what, we, what used to be here. We are going to do virtualization with Proxmox, each virtual machine is going to do its own function, the virtual machines are going to be backed up to the Synology, the Synology is going to be backed up to another Synology or to the cloud. Computers are going to be backed up to the Synology because they still have some computers that hold data that is not backed up. So this is where the network rack is. Let's walk over there. All right, so we have arrived at the network rack. It's located in the warehouse of this small business. By the way, I, by their request, I will not be able to specify the name of this small business. I'm going to respect that. Right above me is the network rack and we will have two Proxmox nodes in the future but for now the first thing that we need to do is to actually unbox and assemble this Synology NES and I'm going to do it in a, in a sort of a time lapse Okay, so I'm done assembling the device and I'm soaking wet from sweat and humidity. This is not the correct place to have a network rack. I'm going to make sure the owner at least puts a dehumidifier here. You can see it's, it's a whole mess and a whole mess of cables that makes me even uncomfortable. But at last, the NES is assembled. By the way, this NES also has on the bottom two NVMe drive base that you can use to either uh, caching or as an NVMe volume and it also has uh, an optional uh, uh, 10 gig network card that can you can slot in the back if you're interested in all the upgrade options this device has you can see a video I created not too long ago I will put a link to it in the top right corner by the way I also had 16 gigs of RAM lying around and I decided to donate uh, uh, to this case and so the NES is now assembled, and uh, at least on the hardware level, and so the next stage will be to configure it on the software level. Again, I already have a video on this process in depth. We are going to do it in a little bit uh, briefly in this video. If you want to see the, 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 the process in depth, I will put a link to another video right now in the top right corner. Alright, so at this point, all I have to do is now is to power on the device and open up a web browser and go to find.synology.com and in fact 
I'm going to pause this video and I'm going to resume it uh, from my web browser. All right, guys, so first of all, let me apologize for the sound of my voice here. I'm just suffering from a bit of a cold. Okay, so I just went into my web browser and went to find.synology.com and just to set the expectations straight here, this is not a tutorial. If you want to see an in-depth video about this process, I will put a link in the top right corner to a video I created not too long ago. All I'm going to do here is just to create a volume and then I'm going to create a few shared folders to one of these shared folders I am going to give NFS permissions because I will use it later on. I'm going to set a static IP address. I'm going to configure a few basic security settings. The most hardening will be done at a later point in time. And then I'm going to install a few Synology packages that I know I'm going to use like Active Backup for Business, Hyper Backup, a, a snapshot replication, etc. So I'm going to completely speed run this entire process and I will see you all on the other side. Okay, so now the NAS is also configured on the software level and now it's actually ready to serve. And in order to show you how it will be put into use in this small business, I'm going to utilize my ability to do time travel. We're going to time travel two weeks into the future when both of the Proxmox nodes are already up and running and configured, virtual machines are running, and then we're going to take a look how we are going to back up the virtual machines to the NAS and how we are going to back up the NES to another location so that we will have some compliance with the 3 to one backup strategy. All right, let's time travel two weeks from now. All right, guys, so we are now two weeks into the future and I can sadly report that world peace hasn't yet been achieved, but we do have two Proxmox nodes already up and running and virtual machines already up and running, which is great. The hardware itself might change in the future if the owner decides to invest in a beefier hardware. Even if that happens, it will be just a matter of migrating virtual machines from one node to another. We are not doing physical anymore. So at least one of these virtual machines that you see here already holds three business critical applications, a bookkeeping application, a database that was installed on this virtual machine. So for all, the, all intents and purposes, this virtual machine is now at least as critical as was the physical Dell server. But as it stands right now, nothing is backed up. This is the time we will put our Synology NAS into use and we'll mount a shared folder via NFS. We already applied NFS permissions on the shared folder itself. And then we'll create a backup job. So let's begin by going to the storage in, inside Proxmox. And you already see an entry here. This was done as part of my testing, but we'll start fresh. Let's click on add and let's select NFS. As uh, the ID, let's call it DS923. The server will be either the host name or the IP address of the Synology NAS. I'm going to use for now the IP address. Export. If you've uh, typed everything correctly and configured everything correctly, the, the shared folder that are NFS capable will even be populated if you open up this, uh, uh, this drop down and you can see that here is my shared folder that I know has NFS permissions configured so it shows up. If it doesn't show up for you, you can try to manually type this exact value here. All right, we will use this shared folder for disk images, for ISO images, I don't know, for most importantly for backup, uh, backup usages. That's fine and well. If we click on advanced, I am going to try to use NFS version 4.1. If that doesn't work, I might drop down to four or three, but I'm going to try to start with 4.1. And let's click on add. And seems like everything is working as expected. And we can see that the storage is already mounted into, onto, sorry, the, uh, the Proxmox nodes, which is great. Now, this is just one piece of the puzzle in place. We now need to create a backup task or a backup job that will take virtual machine backups and dump them onto the virtual machine, which is really located on the Synology NES. We'll do that by going again to the data center level and backup. Now, by the way, a side note, please keep in mind that everything is, is a derivative of a budget. I'm sure that there are other ways or better ways to do backups than what I'm showing right here. 
again, it's, it's just a matter of us doing the best we can with what we have. All right, so let's click on add and let's define the schedule. Let's select, I don't know, every day at nine o'clock, that's fine. By the way, this is completely editable. So if you want to do it at 10 p.m., you'll just change this value. Let's select the virtual machines that we want to back up. Everything else I'm going to leave as is, even the compression method and the mode, everything. I'm going to change the retention since I don't want to keep every single backup instance. So let's just keep five. That will be, I think, enough. And let's click create. All right, that's great. What I want to do right now is to actually run the backup task. First, I want to make sure it runs without errors, but most importantly, I do want to have at least one backup copy already at the ready. So this backup task will take a while to finish. I will pause the recording and resume it once this is done. All right, so our backup task is now complete. And what we have right now is something that actually never existed in this small business. We now have a way to restore if something goes south. But a backup is not really considered a backup unless you've already tested it. And this is exactly what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to actually simulate a disaster. I'm going to take a virtual machine and completely delete it. It will be the equivalent of what happened to the physical Dell server. So I'm going to take this virtual machine and shut it down. All right, and now I'm going to completely delete it. So now this virtual machine is completely gone. It's lost. Luckily for us, we now have a, a, a restore mechanism. This restore mechanism is maybe Proxmox in the front end, but it's completely Synology in the back end. Let's go ahead to our Synology mounted storage here and go to backups. This is the virtual machine that I, that I completely deleted and let's restore it. I'm going to click on restore and I'm going to even start it after the restore. So I'm going to click on restore. This of course will take time depending on the amount of data this virtual machine used to have. I'm going to pause the recording right here and resume it once the restoration is complete. All right, guys, so the restoration process is complete. And if I'll close out of here, you can see that the virtual machine ID 102 is back up and running. If we'll go to the console, we will see that even the operating system is now booted up. We can log in, meaning everything is working great. But in order to really be able to sleep at night, we have to make sure that the Synology device itself is also backed up, preferably to somewhere off-site. If that doesn't happen, we have actually created a situation where the Synology NES itself is a single point of failure, which is no different than what the physical Dell server was. So right now we have virtual machines that are backed up to our Synology NES, and now we have to make sure that our Synology NES is also backed up. In, so for that case, let's go to our Synology NES web interface. And if you recall, I already installed some Synology apps that I know I'm going to use. This is the one to use one of them. It's Hyper Backup. Let's launch that. Now I'm going to, I'm going to uh, create a virtual machine that will, up, that will back up data to Synology C2. We are right now in a 30 day trial, but I'm pretty sure that the owner will uh, purchase permanent subscription. What I want to do right now is to select folders and packages, click on next. Synology C2 storage is my destination. Click on next. I will now have to sign in to the Synology C2 account for the owners. All right, so we are now logged in. Let's go ahead and click allow. We will create a new backup task. This will be its name. You can change it if you want. All right, click on next. I'm going to select my Proxmox shared folder, click on next. 
I'm not going to select any application to backup. Let's give it a name. Synology C2 is fine by me. Notification, why not? The most important thing is to create a schedule. Now, I'm going to select midnight as my schedule here. You can, of course, select whatever you want. Integrity check every Saturday, why not? I'm going to select next. And I'm going to select done. Now, remember, this can take a long time. It really depends on the amount of data you have on your shared folder. What I am going to do right now is I'm going to let the backup task be created. I'm going to let it finish. And then I'm going to, uh, I'm going to pause the recording. And then I'm going to resume it once this is over. All right, so the backup task is now complete and we can now be rest assured or sleep more easily at night. By the way, if something happens and you want to restore from your backup destination, be it C2 or another remote destination, you'll just click on the restore button right here, select folders and packages, select your backup task, I don't want to restore any system configurations right now. You'll just give it a minute to populate what shared folders are backed up. It will tell you here in the red ex exclamation mark that this shared folder exists on your NES, and so it will be overwritten if you restore it. I don't want to do that right now, but now I can be rest assured that I have my uh, uh, virtual machines that are critical to this small business backed up to the Synology, and I know that the Synology is now backed up to another location that's off-site, so even if something happens to the Synology itself, I will still have a way to restore all the data and be back in business in a matter of minutes instead of, I don't know, days. Alright, so let me close out of here and out of here, and actually at this point we have covered everything we wanted to cover and I hope to see you all in part 2 which should be ready and edited in about a week. In part 2 we will take care mostly about computers holding critical data with Active Backup for Business. In the meantime, please give this video a like and I'll see you all in part 2. Bye bye!